Your game's interface can really make or break the look of your game, but at times updating it can be a pretty painful process. Switching between multiple programs, missing source files, or the constant barrage of client feedback may have you putting off those interface changes for another day. To solve this, let me show you some simple ways to make this process easier and improve the overall look of your interface using Unity's shader graph. We'll look at creating shaders for rounded corners, gradients, and some simple panning. And don't worry, these are pretty simple to put together, but we won't be going into too much detail. So if you want to learn more about what a particular node does, you can select it and hit F1 to bring up the documentation for it. And before we get started, you'll also need to be at least using Unity 2023 to get access to the Canvas shader graph template we'll be using. Also ensure you have the URP package imported into your project. This is a pretty recent addition, and this method can work with earlier versions of Unity with Unity's Unlit Sprite Shader, but according to Unity, this was completely by accident. Alright, I think that's everything, let's get started. To make a shader graph for Canvas, we right click in the asset panel and go to Create, Shader Graph, URP, Canvas, Shader Graph. We'll start with the rounded corners using the rounded rectangle node and hook up its output to both the color and alpha. To control the curve of the corner, let's also create a float variable and plug it into the radius input. If you want, you can also switch the mode to slider. Returning to Unity, let's create a material with this shader and apply it to a canvas image. We'll see that it more or less looks the same, but when I drag the slider, we'll see that the pointed corners become curved. We can also tween the value of the radius to create fun animations like this. And we could do this using Unity's pointer event and whatever your favorite tweening solution is. The only thing we need to worry about is that the canvas doesn't automatically instance the material, so we need to do that manually. Moving on to the gradient shader, we'll start with a UV node and split the result. This will give us positional values from 0 to 1, giving us a smooth gradient for lurping colors, which we'll make the variables for those now. Since I want a vertical gradient, I will drag out the G value corresponding to the UV's Y coordinate. If you want a horizontal gradient, you'll want to drag out the R value, which corresponds to the UV's X coordinate. Next, we'll create a lerp node, plug in our two colors, and plug in the result into the fragment's color. Going back to Unity and applying this shader using a material, we'll see that we now have this nice gradient for backgrounds or give our assets more versatility. Finally, let's take a look at this panning shader, and for this one, we'll use the sprite attached to the image component. To do that, we'll create a new texture 2D variable called main texture. For the reference name, we'll shorten it to underscore main text so we can automatically get the sprite from the canvas image. While we're at it, let's also create two fluid variables for controlling the horizontal and vertical speeds. We'll start with the time node and multiply its time output by our horizontal and vertical speeds. Next, let's combine these values into a new vector 2 and feed it into the offset input of a tiling and offset node. This shifts the UVs, giving us the panning effect. We'll then plug these newly shifted UVs into the UV input of a sample 2D texture node, where we'll also plug in our main texture. And finally, plug in the result to the color of the fragment. Returning to Unity with a repeating texture applied to a canvas image, we just need to apply a material using our panning shader and adjust the speed values. You'll see that we now have this subtle movement to add some visual interest to your backgrounds. If your texture isn't repeating correctly, ensure it is set to repeat rather than clamp in its import settings. With all that said, these shaders can be pretty useful on their own, but they can be combined to create good looking interfaces without needing a lot of custom graphics. As you can see here, I've combined some of the shaders like the curved corner and gradient to create this portrait and its hover effect. Now I think that's it for me. Thank you for watching, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you around.